project. Um, today I'm going to show you how to build and run vanilla, vanilla RTB. Um, this is our stack uh, here on GitHub. Uh, first thing first, uh, let's copy this command. Um, and um, git clone command. Clone. I recommend using a cursive for everyone, even not just using our stack, because sometimes um, um, repo depends on other submodules, and um, in order to get all submodules <coughs> downloaded to your, you need to use the cursive uh, with the git command. So um, here you go. This is the command uh, vanilla rtb. TIT, so if you don't pass a um, folder name here, it'll automatically create a folder called vanilla rtb. So I'm going to execute this command. Our stack is very small, it downloads quickly. Um, so it did create a folder called vanilla rtb. I'm always going to refer you to our front page because we list enough commands here to build the stacks. The stack, uh, make the release. So I'm gonna go over release um, build right now. And of course, if you want to debug it, you will have to build it this way here, explain below. So make the release. Um, recommend. Release. Then change to that folder. And execute the CMake command. Okay, so here we go. That's the command. It actually shows you it identified, found the Apple, Apple um, Xcode installed compiler on my machine. It's right here. And everything else was also found the boost version 164. Um, Mac is a wonderful system uh, and Homebrew works real wonderful here. So that's why I use it for my development. Um, it has no problem downloading, installing uh, binaries, sources and everything else. So basically here we have everything ready for us to execute next command, which is make install. I'm gonna pass uh, minus J20. I don't wanna wait that long and hoping that my machine is going to build it much faster with this um, parameter. Here we go. Um, it's building. And uh, while I'm building, I'm going to go over some of the folders we have here. Uh, one of them is uh, called examples, and that's where um, everything is happening here right now in vanilla RTB. Everything every executable is created here from this folder. So if you go to the diagram, it explains to you how we treat the bid requests and how we design vanilla examples <clears throat> to show you how to pick um, the campaign. Um, the first filter or lookup, we call them lookups, is done on geo, city country geo ID. So you pull geo ID out of it, and then geo ID, geo ID is fed into geo campaigns. Once you pull up campaign ID, you do uh, lookups on ads, plus uh, impression width and height is used to actually select the corresponding ad the matching the impression. The internal auction here it shows as needed sometimes when there's more than uh, one potential bid. There's a selection algorithm that we currently use in examples as just a max bid. But as you can understand, uh, it could be your own custom algorithm that um, can be applied here and um, a few lines of code change and you have your own different bidder. Okay, well it's uh, building here and it looks like all is good except some, some benign warnings. Um, this compiler is much stricter than um, 
the one we used in Linux, the GCC, so it warns you about um, some of these R's, some of them are coming from boost. The one that is ours is also benign, but um, but it can be fixed. So there's less warning. It's actually right here. It shows the line number, uh, but it's all benign. Um, you don't have to worry about it. So with this stack, we also ship two shell scripts. One is curl, and one is ab. The curl is basically needed for you to uh, run the test with the bidder and to see if the bidder actually responds uh, with the correct bid. And AB is used to um, to check the performance of the bidder. Okay, when you, once you see this um, printout, like installing, um, that's the end of the build process. It tells you that it installed uh, all these binaries into release example bin folder. And that's this is where you have to go to run your tests. So let's go there. And uh, and we're gonna execute the first um, sample here called HTTP bitter test. So here you go, it um, starts up and it shows you what uh, what are the parameters that it's starting up with. One of them is support, I don't know, the log path and all the other information that is probably not needed, but for debugging purposes, you'll need to know where everything is read from. And um, so that's what it is. So let's go to a different window, um, different uh, terminal window, and try to run the curl first. Okay, um, I have something in history already, so I don't have to retype it. The reason for um, this is because the AB or curl sh written in um, bash that only understand those can bash commands on Linuxes and this bash that I have still here is slightly different so it will not run. So you'll have to basically open the file, shell, shell file and um, create manually the command that I have already created. So we're gonna run a uh, curl into our bidder currently running on port uh, 9081 on the local host. So there you go, you got your bid request and bid response. Um, the bid re request that we're doing is all installed here. It's actually this file. And you can take a look inside what this bid request is. So um, we, when we build our stack during deployment, um, we, as you saw, copy everything into the bin, and uh, there's also a directory called data, or data under the bin, and um, the ads file gets produced, and this time it's uh, 1,661 ads running in the test, um, which will be different every time you build your stack, basically. The, uh, <coughs> the Python script we use, uh, you can look at this Python script that generate ads, can be tweaked to make it less or more ads that you like to have. Currently, it's I think it's between 16 to 1800 ads that can be generated during the build. Um, so all those ads, everything that you saw here, all these files, they're currently loaded into um, IPC, into shared memory, and um, and they can be loaded and reloaded as many times as you want during the without restarting uh, your main process. Um, there's a read write logs on the shared memory that we provided with our stack, so there's no need to stop your bidder and restart it again. 
you can just modify your uh, campaigns on the run. Okay, so we saw the curl, the color looks good, and uh, now I'm gonna execute. Um, I'm going to execute um, the Apache benchmark um, to show you what uh, you're going to get on this machine uh, while matching on could be up to 10 different campaigns currently that are matched and then we select the max as I told you previously. Okay. Um, See, that's um, not as good as the last run I ran. That was 25,000, but it's still 23 right now, currently 23. But if I rebuild the stack with less campaign matching, it could go into up to 27,000. So we have a little um, issue with scalability uh, at the last stage. So 23, 23. Anyway, that's, that's still you know, not so bad. Um, and I can show you here that if I take either rebuild or take uh, from the previous build, so I'll copy the data from previous build and and I think it's gonna be much faster because it has a less matching campaigns. No, that's slightly about the same. Yeah, one of the things that um, I forgot to mention is that the test I did before was not uh, running the QuickTime. I'm running currently a, more applications on this machine to record this video. <laughs> and that's probably the reason why it went down from 27 to 23. But um, that's relevant. You can try it yourself on Mac or... And let me show you uh, the... Uh, the, uh, the system I'm running with. This is 1.6 gigahertz um, i5, that's a two core CPU. And that will give you approximately, if you don't run a QuickTime or other applications on your machine, it'll give roughly about 26 to 27,000 uh, requests per second. Currently I'm getting about 23,000 on this machine. And that's a complete match that went through all 16, almost 1700 uh, add campaigns and found the matching one. Um, that's what you're gonna get on the small machines. And if you move to faster machine, you'll get, you know, better throughput. Our handlers, without bidding, just the handler itself, uh, does 50 to 60,000 quotes per second, request uh, queries per second. So that's also a test that you can run here. Um, and for that test, you will need to start a um, this one. So when you start this um, 
uh, OpenRTB handler, basically as we call them, exchange handler. That will show you just at what speed the exchange handler runs uh, request. And you can see that this will give you up to 50,000 requests per second. And this is our like, baseline. From here, the speed will degrade, basically. It's gonna, you're going to get less and less. This is our max speed on the one single process. Um, what is uh, possible to do with um, to increase the speed though is to set a um, engine X and start a um, few of the time. and uh, you'll probably have to change configuration to have two three processes started and this way <clears throat> you'll have a better load balancing the processes each process will have um, you know same shared memory attached you will not change anything other than starting few processes basically and putting a nginx in in front of your um, handlers um, two three handlers will give you at least even on this machine will give you up to 40 and 50 thousand qpss uh, going into faster machines you are looking at probably increasing your Throughput up to 100,000, and that's the limit of the Nginx. Um, I haven't tested yet, but uh, that's um, coming from the uh, Google searches that shows the Nginx can handle up to 100, 110 requests per second, basically. And of course, depending on machine, I understand that could be less or more, but it's up to you guys to try it and see if it works for you. Um, this video is. Um, is done. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, send us emails or make issue requests, and we'll be happy to look at it. And uh, we're going to be doing more series of um, of the vanilla. Then our next one is uh, vanilla RTB integration with uh, with Hyperledger, and uh, we'll. Uh, We'll be able to show you guys how to, you know, how to create a um, vanilla RTB integrated solution with uh, distributed ledger for abilities to all the partners on the network to um, be more transparent and, uh, you know, look at your bit history in a way that is not just stored as a ledger on your end or on SSP. It'll be shared ledger that partners can look at and, um, and, and, and see and consolidate, basically uh, uh, you know, have a better understanding of what is going on in, uh, in, in the bidding process. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Enjoy your video.